Hey guys, uh, this is Josh A. Loop, and um, recently we've had a question regarding contrawound uh, coils on a uh, Loop Crystal radio, and obviously, uh, as you guys are aware, this is uh, a portion of my 8-foot uh, Litz Loop, and here is actually where the four wires come from the main loop, one, two, and then over here, three and four. So we got two coils on the main loop, and those coil wires, as you can see, come to um, this ceramic um, silver uh, rotary switch. And I believe that has uh, three separate sections on that switch. And I had to do some um, ciphering to try to figure out exactly how to make use of that switch so that I had um, correct functionality of uh, switching between uh, contra series and contra parallel connections and so I used some quick disconnect um, silver plated quick disconnect uh, connectors here and I labeled them as you can see the, the uh, B, C, um, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and Delta listed on the uh, wires and they come into the switch that allows me to use this switch to uh, change the main loop of this or the, the main pickup loop on this crystal radio um, in a, like a high frequency configuration or a low frequency configuration. So we got four, uh, four wires, two coils coming into the switch which basically output only two wires and those two wires of course come to uh, this uh, variable capacitor uh, with the reduction drive. And so that forms my um, my RF uh, input of this particular loop crystal radio, uh, the main tank coil and the uh, main tank capacitor, as you can see here. And all that does is just picks up, um, as you all know, picks up the uh, radio frequency um, and it uses the uh, capacitor and coil to resonate and it re-radiates that particular um, section of the uh, the bandwidth and then that uh, that re-radiated um, portion of the bandwidth is then picked up by my detector section which again is one one coil value this is not contrawound this is a single coil value um, this one is a zero bias FET uh, driven um, detector um, as I've mentioned I think in other videos but there's the FET in the center of that polystyrene um, section there but uh, this is this my detector section here um, only uses like I mentioned one coil value to tune the whole band so when I'm using this loop radio what I do first of all tune this detector section of course my headphones are hooked up uh, when I'm using it I put my headphones on tune this um, anywhere in the in the band and then what I do is I uh, use this switch and this variable capacitor um, and I, I leave the switch setting where it is and I'll go uh, tune for higher uh, frequency or lower frequency until I get a signal peak in my detector section and once I have a signal peak I know that, uh, that you know the two are approximately tuned to the same frequency and then I can fine tune you know a little here and then of course a little there now let's just say for instance I uh, am at the low um, the low inductance or the high frequency setting on my switch and on my main contra coil if I'm sweeping the band from 1710 and I'm getting down to uh, 1100 and then I'm at 1050 and then 1040 and I'm at uh, you know a thousand kilohertz I know that that's about time for me to go ahead and switch my uh, my contra uh, main coil contra switch to the high inductance setting so I make that uh, switch and then then I, I go back to the capacitor and then I can uh, sweep it back and forth uh, wherever I need to until once again I hear my signal peak at a thousand kilohertz in this and then I can go ahead and tune it down and then and go back here and tune this one a little bit and uh, you know you definitely hear the signals um, peak 
uh, in the background, you know, you can hear multiple stations. And, and of course, when the band conditions are good, as you all know, on a very uh, well-operating crystal radio, you can pretty much tune it anywhere in the band, and you're gonna hear something, and um, which is is really cool. And that's usually the mark of a crystal radio that's that's functioning. Uh, fairly well, and so I've, I've been with the contra wound um, configuration. That really, I really enjoy that. Um, I think it, pre you know, preserves the loop balance, uh, which means that it really allows uh, more of that deep figure eight uh, pattern of reception. So you can null adjacent stations um, pretty well uh, when you preserve that loop balance, um, and also when you have under certain conditions of the main um, loop coil configuration it actually allows some of the uh, ends of the wires to be at a lower RF potential um, as opposed to a, a single solenoid wound uh, inductance value for the main tuning uh, the main loop pickup loop. Um, the other thing that really helps um, obviously if you dealt with crystal radios um, you've run into the issue of when you go to tune, just the act of having your hand physically near the coil or any switch or uh, any capacitor changes the tuning. And, you know, we might only be talking about a few kilohertz or five kilohertz or, or you know, less than, less than 10 kilohertz, which is less than one, one uh, channel on the uh, AM broadcast band. But sometimes that can be enough to make a difference and so it's obviously not something that you want to have in a, a well-functioning uh, radio and so ways to combat that um, one is going contra wound um, like I've done on both of my large uh, eight-foot loops um, and the other way is to uh, go to a stator to stator configuration and I went ahead and just quickly um, soldered up a variable capacitor here. This is a four section um, silver plated variable capacitor. Each section there is probably around 15 or 10 to 200 picofarads. So each section is pretty low. Um, in fact I believe if I remember right I used this particular capacitor on my first 18 gauge 8 foot diameter um, loop octo, uh, octagonal loop and contra wound basically or not contra wound but uh, the uh, stator to stator configuration normally on a variable capacitor you would connect to your frame then you would connect to um, one of these uh, stator sections and you might parallel a couple of those to get your inductance value for instance this one the uh, if you use these two sections that would be about 400 picofarads uh, probably around 20 to 400 picofarads and, and that would be pretty nice that would work pretty well well in a stator to stator configuration if you hook these two together and then you hook these two together and then you take your, your coil leads which for me in this case would be these two coil wires coming from this switch if I were to take these two wires and connect one of those wires here to these two sections and one of them here to these two stator sections um, that would basically allow the capacitance to go from the stator to the rotor from the rotor to the stator and so I um, and a few other guys call that a stator to stator connection now what that does that essentially allows this pair of stators and this pair of stators to be at a um, higher RF potential in relation to the frame and the frame typically will um, be at a very low RF potential which means that as you're tuning this thing and you get your hand close to it you actually don't change the frequency at all and so you do not have any hand detuning um, of your uh, crystal radio and so that that just adds to the pleasure of operating um, the radio it's very um, you know, it's very straightforward. You don't body positioning becomes less of an issue, and hand capacitance detuning is less of an issue. It allows you to peak your station, and regardless of where you are located, it stays peaked, which is um, which is really nice. 
and um, so, uh, but what you want to do when you're approaching a um, loop crystal radio, and in particular large loop crystal radio, I, I would move towards a contra wound technique. Um, it's worked extremely well for me, and it's given me the benefits that I've listed on the radio board, and also that we just uh, discussed. Um, and the other thing you want to um, do is try to find high quality capacitor. Um, in I prefer a two section capacitor similar to the one you see here. This one I think is around 15 to 500 picofarads per section. Um, and I can hook my um, my coil leads to this stator section and this stator section. And that will give me a range of probably about 10 to 250 picofarads, which is kind of on the low side. Um, if I were able to, I would find a two section variable capacitor with each section being maybe like 800 picofarads. And um, when I use them in a stator to stator configuration, obviously when you have capacitors in series like you would with stator to stator, your capacitance goes in half. And so instead of 20 to 400 picofarads, it now becomes basically like 10 to 200. So if I went to an 800, that would essentially give me uh, a total um, capacitance sweep of probably about 5 or 10 um, to, uh, to 400, which would be really um, pretty ideal for uh, my inductance value that I have. So hopefully um, that helps. I know the stator to stator configuration uh, term's kind of thrown around and it's kind of confusing. Um, and, and hopefully looking at those particular um, variable capacitors there um, has cleared that up just slightly. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed and uh, hopefully I didn't screw up too much technically. So all right, enjoy guys. Talk to you later on the uh, radio board. Bye.